Hi, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to another Focus 45. If you've been here before, you might know me. My name is Michelle. I am a teacher in Milano Meraviri. I'm from Pakistan. And um, I've been living in Milan for almost three years now. Mm -hmm. And my name is Sean. I am from Ireland. I am Irish. I work with Michelle on uh, Via Meravigli here in Milan. And I've been here since September. Okay, today we are going to look at language for describing a place. Okay, describing a place. Would you like to read, Sean? Yes, yeah, so in this focus activity, we're looking at two forms. There is and there are, singular and plural, to talk about what features you can find in a place, what facilities, and then the modal verb can to talk about activities, possible activities in a place, and just general vocabulary and prepositions around describing a place and doing it with, with good accuracy. Yeah. Okay, where do you live? So over here we have um, a few phrases. I am going to read them and pause after each line so you have the time to repeat accurately after me. I live in a city, in the suburbs, in a town, in a village, in the countryside, in the mountains, by the sea, near Berlin, near the Duomo, near Florence. So um, first, we're just going to go through these and explain what they mean. So the first one is quite easy. I live in the city. The city is a big town of about uh, of above two thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The next is in the suburbs. Um, the suburbs are the um, is the area, the residential area outside a city. So um, sometimes. It is a separate residential community. Um, sometimes it can be um, part of the city with, um, but, and, but the city is usually within commuting distance. So it's not very far. Um, in a town, a town is a small, important city. Um, a town usually has inhabitants of below 2,000. Um, next, we have a village. A village is a very small town. Um, how many people would you say make up a village, Sean? Um, a couple of hundred, I think. Um, any more than 500, it's a town, really. Right, so I think 500. So it's a small, a very small town. Um, it's essentially a community that lives together. Um, the countryside is um, the area outside the city where there's a lot of greenery, a lot of fields. Um, not much is happening there in terms of infrastructure. It's very limited, but um, you live in nature. Um, in the mountains, of course, um, that's self-explanatory, by the sea. This is important because of the prepositions we use. We don't say, I live next to the sea, or um, I don't know how else you would say it, but, <laughs> but sometimes you 
at the sea, on the sea. By the sea. Um, <laughs> right. So sometimes we get some strange uh, prepositions. Uh, it's important to note the preposition is by the sea. And if you live close to something, you can say, I live near. So, um, Sean, we both live in Milan, so we live in a city. Um, but before Milan, where did you live? I, well, I lived originally, I grew up in, a, in the countryside near a village, a village of maybe 100 people in uh, the west of Ireland. Uh, there were two pubs and one shop, so <laughs> gives you an idea. Um, and then I went to university in Dublin, but I lived in the suburbs of Dublin. I did not live in the city centre. I lived in the periphery of Dublin. How about you, Michelle? Where did you live before Milan? Before Milan, um, I lived in uh, London and Karachi, and they are both big cities. I have never lived in the countryside or mm -hmm. in a village. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. I spent um, three days in the countryside once because I used to work for a power plant. Um, I was in house council, so we had to visit all the power plants as part of you know, the orientation program. So um, I went to this power plant, which is in the middle of nowhere. And uh, at night, all you could hear were the crickets and uh, there was just no sound. <laughs> yes, that's life for me. Um, yeah. I mean, you've only lived in really big cities then. I mean, Karachi, London and Milan are all huge cities, I would say. True. Hmm. True. I found the lack of noise very um, unsettling. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like the, the lack of noise. It's one thing that I miss about living in the countryside. Sure, I understand. It's uh, what you grow up with. It's familiar. It's comfortable. It reminds you of home. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I see that we have two viewers um, write to us and let us know where do you live? Do you live in a city, in the suburbs, or by the sea? Mm. I would love to live I by have, the sea. I have also lived by the sea because Karachi is a city by the sea. It's a coastal mm. city. Um, it's quite nice, but it's Yeah, great. Would you like to take the slide? Sure, so here we have to match the opposites. So we have lots of adjectives. We have 14 adjectives and you have to match the numbers with the letters. I will read through them and like before, I will leave a pause for you to repeat after me. And I see we have five people watching us, so I'm sure mm. some of you can match up these in the comments. So put the number and the letter together in the comments while I read through. So, noisy, big, nice, old, clean, interesting, Beautiful, modern, quiet, boring, ugly, dirty, horrible, small. Okay, um, so we are going to start matching them. Um, noisy, something that makes a lot of noise, so it's very loud like a party at one o'clock in the morning on a work work day <laughs> so the opposite of that would be 
quiet, mm -hmm. which is when things are very silent. Okay, um, number two, we have big. We know what big means, large. And the opposite of that would be small. Next up, we have nice. How would you describe nice, Sean? Um, I think there's a relationship between nice and beautiful. Mm. and. The difference is that nice, beautiful is kind of about the appearance, the aesthetic quality of a place. Whereas nice, I think, is more about the character of the place. Nice is similar to pleasant. It's, it's, a, it's a nice place. It's not a, the strongest possible compliment you can give a place. It's, sort of, it's just pleasant. It's not bad. It's nice. Fantastic. We have a viewer. Um, we have Syria. Hi, Syria. Syria is from Bologna, but uh, she lives in a little village in the countryside. Perfect grammar, Syria. Good job. Yeah, great use of little. We have Francesco. Hello, I'm Francesco. I was born in Bergamo in a very small village near the mountains. And now, since three years, I live in a village near where I lived before. Fantastic. Great work, guys. So nice, so the opposite of nice, as I was saying, it kind of means pleasant. And then kind of unpleasant, a synonym of that would be horrible. So nice and horrible go together. And this is, it's more about the character of a place and how it looks. Um, yeah. Yeah, you see, Syria has gone for nice and ugly, mm. which, as I said, there's a relationship between nice and beautiful, and there's a relationship between horrible and ugly. The difference is that like beautiful, ugly is just about the appearance. It's about the the way somewhere looks. Because a lot of times, you know, the place could be beautiful, but maybe the people aren't very nice. It's, um, it's not an easy place to live. Whereas sometimes maybe the place is ugly, but the people are very nice. So, you know, it depends. That's the difference. Mm. So now it goes with horrible. Okay, and old would obviously go with modern. Mm -hmm. um, so it's can... go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say that old is maybe a bit negative. So if you think somewhere is not modern in a negative way, you say it's old. If you mean it in a positive way, that it's uh, well preserved, it's a nice historic place, you would say historic. So, because, you know, sometimes a student will say, well, Rome is very old, and I say, well, <laughs> you know, it's a good thing. Show some respect. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that's a really good point to point, a uh, really good um, point to highlight because uh, very often we do make we do see students make the mistake where they've called some a place old or a building old but when you call a building old um you mean that it hasn't been well maintained and it's falling and things like that and while that may be true of uh, places like the Colosseum, it also has a lot of history. So we call it historical or historic. Okay, um, moving on. Next, we have clean. Um, clean is when something doesn't have any stains on it, it's fresh. And the opposite of clean would be dirty, when something is um, very messy, when a place is very messy, it's 
has garbage lying around. Okay, next up, uh, we have interesting. And when a place is interesting, there are usually um, perhaps lots of places to explore, lots of things to do and see. And the opposite of that would be boring, a place where there was nothing to do or see. And of course, the opposite of beautiful is ugly. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you like to take this, Sean? So, which of the adjectives on the left are similar to these words? So, we have some more adjectives. So, cultural, exciting, polluted, chaotic, historical, and crowded. So, some of those are positive and some are negative. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, we have some positive words, we have some negative adjectives. Um, so let's look at them one by one. Cultural. So how would you classify this? Positive or negative? Uh, definitely it's a positive thing. A cultural city is one where there is a lot of cultural activity. There's a lot of music, there's a lot of art, there's a lot of events. Mm. There, it's a for the world of culture. Um, I would say it's similar to interesting because it's about lots, lots of activities, lots of things to do, things to see. Okay, fantastic. And would you include museums in this um, category of activities? Yes, definitely. The number of museums, I think, is very significant for how cultural a city is. The number of places for art and culture. Fantastic. Before we go any further, we have Giovanna. Giovanna um, it lives in San Giorgio in Cremano, and that is a town near Naples. Welcome, Giovanna. We're so happy you could join us today. Um, OK, so we have cultural, and that is similar to interesting. What about exciting? Hmm. So this is. Um... This means kind of a lot of activity, maybe a, a young city with lots of um, nightlife, adventure, things to do, very busy place, lots of opportunity. Um, I would say, again, it's similar to interesting. I would say usually kind of modern cities are exciting. With some people, it could be a noisy city is also exciting, so it depends on your perspective. That's an uh, important difference because if you are young and you live in a city with lots of universities, um, it you would enjoy it and you would probably have a good time. But if you are a, an older professional, you probably do not want to have um, all that noise. Um, all night. You'd probably prefer to um, live in a neighborhood which was calm during the weekdays. So, what about polluted? The next word on our list. So, this is uh, similar to dirty, and this is kind of the uh, kind of when there's a pollution in the atmosphere. So, when there's smoke from factories, when there's smog, when the air is not fresh. It can also be in the water. Sometimes if the water is not clean, it's dirty. It's mm. being polluted with something. It's about the environment in a city, in a place. It's very negative, I think. Definitely. Next up, we have chaotic. So chaotic is when there's a lot of chaos. But how would you um, talk about chaos in terms of the city? So, yeah, chaos means that the city, it's, it's very busy, it's very noisy. There's a lot of people around, a lot of people, and not very, maybe not very well organized. You know, there's problems with traffic. There, there's too many people. It's, it's negative. It's not just uh, busy. 
it's you know it's too busy chaotic is negative right and uh what adjective do you think is similar to chaotic um definitely uh noisy mm. and another one on the the list of new adjectives crowded i think is it's similar to chaotic. A crowded means that there's a lot of people. There are too many people. It means that everywhere is too full. There's too many people. It's negative. It's not positive when there are that many people. So crowded and chaotic are both negative, I would say. Um, we have Marcelo joining us. Hello, Marcelo. Um, OK, um, next up, we have historical. Yeah. So, right. Like I said earlier, you know, it's like old, but in a very positive way because um, historical cities are usually very beautiful, very cultural, very interesting. So, mm -hmm. especially in, in a place like Italy, very many cities are historic um, Florence, Rome, Venice. And you can say historic or historical, it, it depends. Okay, and then we have crowded. Um, Celia has a question. Are crowded and chaotic the same? No, um, but they can be related. Um, a crowded place is a place with too many people, right? Now, the chances are that if a place has too many people and they cannot manage those people, it will turn chaotic right think about yeah. a bar a bar which is not well organized yes. if there are too many people the bar will turn chaotic but if it's well organized and there are too many people it could still be organized and not chaotic yes and personally when i, I hear the word chaotic and a city i think about traffic i think about cars mm. I think about um, vehicles, too much traffic when there's too many cars on the road. So crowded is for people and chaotic is for all of the activity in the city. True. It's just a basic lack of uh, organization. And uh, when I also think of the word chaotic, I think of cars blaring their horns and yeah. um, stuck in a traffic jam. Yeah, it's because it's frustrating when it's not organized, you know, well. Okay, moving on to description. So here we have a few cities. We have London, we have Delhi, Lake Como, and New York. To describe these places, um, example, what's London like? London is very big. London isn't boring. So while Sean and I use the adjectives we just learned to um, describe these places, why don't you guys write to us, send us your sentences, send us your descriptions, um, so we can have a lot more fun with it. Okay, Sean, what do you think about London? Yes. I have not visited London. I know lots about it, but I have not lived there. You have, though, you just said. So yeah. tell me, what's London like? London is crowded. Mm -hmm. London is cultural. And um, London isn't quiet. Mm -hmm. London is big, uh, London is historical, London is polluted. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's lots. That's lots of That's lots. I think I've used up all the adjectives. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to New York? No, I haven't. I have a few friends in new york and um they have told me very various things about it i think new york is um is modern 
is um, very interesting, very exciting, but it isn't clean. It's mm. very dirty, it's very polluted, and I think it's a little bit dangerous. Yeah, so dangerous, yeah. Thing. danger, criminality a little bit. Mm -hmm. A very interesting place, lots of opportunity, I think. Yeah, I, um, I no, I've never been to New York, but my friends from there um, basically say the same thing. They do stress how dirty and smelly it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do say that um, there are rats, big rats. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I probably uh, would not do well in that kind of situation. So, um, but it's a very, very big city, right? It's massive. Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest in, in the whole world. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots and lots of suburbs as well. Okay, and now we have Lake Como, and uh, we've both been to Lake Como yes. because we live uh, in Milan, so it is our duty. <laughs> <laughs> to check out the <laughs> home. Yes, yeah, you, it's very, you know, um, it's you, very so convenient so. to visit. Yeah, it's very convenient. You can't live in Milan and uh, not go see Lake Homo. Mm -hmm. So, on that note, what do you think of Lake Como? Um, it's it's very quiet. It's very it's very nice. It's very beautiful. Um, it isn't busy. It isn't noisy. Um, it uh, the word I would use is maybe idyllic. It's, it's like mm. paradise. It's really lovely, really nice. It's lots and lots of nature. It's maybe maybe not so interesting. You could argue in terms of activities and things going on but I don't think it's the point of Lake Como yeah I think the point of Lake Como is the exact opposite right just to have to be very calm a moment of stillness mm. yes I have not been but I imagine that Delhi would be very different have you been to Delhi Michelle no, I haven't. I'm Pakistani. Okay, so you <laughs> never go. <laughs> no, no, no. I would love to go, but it's very hard for Pakistanis um, to get tourist visas to India. Really? I didn't know that. God. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit hard. Um, I would actually love to go to back to India because my dad's family is from India, so the south of mm. India, so I would love to go check it out. Okay, well that's a bit. Mm. So um, Delhi, I imagine, is very polluted. Mm. Um, it's historical. Yeah. Delhi has um, ancient history, so before the British conquered India, um, Delhi was ruled by emperors for centuries. So it's very rich in history because that um, Delhi was their stronghold, their seat of power. So um, it's got so many interesting um, museums and monuments um, from the subcontinent. Delhi is, I think, parts of Delhi are modern. The parts that are new and of course cost a lot of money i think those parts are very modern and um, they look quite beautiful mm. and yeah that's all i know about delhi to be honest yeah is the taj mahal in delhi or is it somewhere else no the taj mahal is in um i think agra okay um, it's, Is that near Delhi? <laughs> <laughs> Just around the corner. 
um, it's close by. Like you can make a trip to the Taj Mahal and Delhi, I suppose. Right. But since I have done um, neither, I'm not really the authority. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But I think it takes about four hours, probably, because it's not that far. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marcella says New York is a city, very nice and interesting for holiday, but it isn't quiet. Good job. Yeah. But just if you know, in English, we always put the adjective before the noun. So New York is a very nice and interesting city for holidays. So I'm just going to put that down for you. Don't worry about it. This is um, a mistake that's pretty common just because um, you might still be translating in your head. So don't worry about it. It's just all you need is a little bit of practice. Yes, try another one. Try another sentence and see if you can get it right. And remember, you want to say holiday because um, you're talking about not one specific holiday, but you're the general, general holiday. So it's great for a holiday or it's great for holiday. Okay, moving on. What do you do in these spaces? Oh, this is fun. <laughs> okay, your would you like All the to places we can't go anymore. <laughs> and the things we can't do. Yes, the sweet memories of, of activities. <laughs> okay. So, um, Sean's really funny. He's always making me laugh. Yes. Yeah, it's good to laugh when you learn English. I think it's a it helps you remember, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I will read through this so slide. Right. So what do you do in a cinema? So this question is asking you what activity, what, what, what are you doing? What action are you doing in a certain place? So you watch films and you eat popcorn at the cinema, in a cinema. So we have the places, I'll read through them, and the activities, and just make a sentence about what you do in one of these places. Match them up with these activities, which go with which place. So we have cinema, restaurant, museum, castle, shopping center, school, hospital, park, gym, hotel and shops, and then the activities, see a doctor, go shopping, play sport, eat dinner, do exercise, stay, watch films, look at paintings, study history, learn things, have fun. Okay, so we've done cinema. Let's move on to restaurant. What do you do in a restaurant? Mm. You can eat food and drink beverages in a restaurant. So, beverage. A beverage is something you drink, like... Um, a water, a bottle of water, or um, some Coca-Cola. 
Okay, next we have um, museum. Guys, why don't you write to us and let us know um, what you do in these spaces? Mm -hmm. Good work. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, and this is an MIU watch film. Excellent. And in the museum, there's many things you can do, I think. I think you can. Mm -hmm. I think you can learn things, you can study history, you can look at paintings, you can have fun. Okay, next up is castle. Um, remember when you are pronouncing the word castle, the T is silent, so it's not casco. Um, well, I don't know what you can do in a castle. You can walk around. And look at the have wall. You, have you visited the Sforzesco in Milan? I don't know. I think I probably oh. have. Or do I not remember? Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of things to do there. You can look at paintings. You can study history. You can learn, I think, usually in old buildings. So as you can tell. <laughs> Um, Sean is the more cultured of the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marcelo says you can study history. This is true. This is true. Um, oh, history was yeah. never my favorite subject. So perhaps that's why when mm -hmm. I am in the castle, I look at stuff and then I think, mm -hmm. okay, might as well go to a museum. Well, maybe you can tell what you do in a shopping centre then. <laughs> oh, that was low, but true. <laughs> in a shopping centre, Marcelo knows better than I do, you can go shopping. You can go shopping. Okay, and there is a term which is called window shopping. Mm. Okay. So this is when you don't um, actually buy anything. <clears throat> Perhaps you want to buy someone a gift, but you don't know, um, you don't have any idea what to get them as a present. So what you could do is to go to the shopping center and go around looking at the shops, um, looking at what's available without actually purchasing anything. So um, that is called window shopping. When you go on the ground and stuff and don't end up buying anything. Okay, we have schools. What do you do in a school? So um, yeah, I can... think um, you should learn things in school, no? Yeah. You can learn things in school. Um, you teach things in school. Mm -hmm. Okay, next We up. have fun in our school, don't we, Michelle? We do. We certainly do. I do miss um, the physical building. As nice as this is. Yeah. Yep. And I'm sure our students um, and our viewers also feel the same way about their place of work. Mm -hmm. oh, Marcelo, on a roll. Um, what do you do in a hospital? Do you see a doctor? What do you do in a park? You play a sport. Fantastic. At the gym, you do exercises. Wow, Marcelo, you are on a roll. Fantastic. What about a hotel? I think so, this is actually important mm. because um, the verb to stay in English is confusing for Italians, I find, because mm. the equivalent in Italian is much more versatile. You can use it just if you're in a place, you are staying there. 
No, in English, you have to be sleeping somewhere during the night to be staying there. You don't, you don't stay at work, you don't stay um, in the park, you don't stay in the shop. You, you sleep, you stay. That's the implication in English. Yep, Giovanna, uh, winter shopping is when you look for something without buying anything. Okay, um, that's great. My fellow has nailed it, stay. And shops, um, you buy things from shops? That's about it. <laughs> maybe um, you try, if it's a clothes shop, maybe you try on some clothes. Mm. Yeah, try on some clothes. Okay. What is there in your town slash city? Examples. In my town, there is a park. In my city, there isn't a cinema. In my city, there are lots of shops. In my city, there aren't any hotels. So what I would like to highlight here is the use of there is and there isn't and there are and there aren't. There is is used with a singular noun. The same for there isn't. And there are is used with a plural noun, with plural nouns and the same for there aren't. There is and there isn't is also used for uncountable nouns. For example, um, water or pasta. Whereas there are and there aren't are used for countable nouns such as um, hats or phones or computers. Okay, so what is there in your town and city? So you could talk about Dublin and I could talk about Karachi. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. So <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. Yes. It's a fun. So in Dublin there is um let me see. There, there are lots of cinemas, restaurants, um, shops, schools. There aren't many hospitals. <laughs> there are a few, but there should be more. Um, there is a very big park. I think it's the biggest uh, city park in Europe. It's really big. It's called the wow. Phoenix Park. Very nice. There are deer in the park. It's very exciting. It is. I'm excited all yeah. the way along. <laughs> there is a zoo in the park, and the president wow. uh, lives in the park as well. Whoa! That is some <laughs> park. Yeah, it is some park. Yeah, and. Um, there are lots of gyms, not that I would know. I don't, um, I've, I never went. There are lots of hotels and um, one or two shopping centers, not lots and lots of shopping centers, not one or two shopping centers. And there is actually, there is a castle, there's Dublin Castle, but um, it's not as impressive as, as a sports Sesco, I must say. So Dublin, Dublin has quite a lot. How about Karachi? Okay, there is a the okay. Marcelo, before I start, says in my country there is so country is Italy. I believe you would like to say city, right? So in my city there is a cinema, a museum, but there isn't a castle. In your city, are there any castles? Fantastic, good work. In my city, there are no castles, but there is a palace. So a palace is a small mm -hmm. castle. 
Um, in my city, there are cinemas and restaurants. There is a museum. There are no castles. So there isn't a castle. There are shops. There are schools. There are hospitals. There are some parks, not many and not very big. There are many gyms. There are some hotels and there are many shopping centers. Okay, and with that, we are coming to the end of the lesson. So what I would like to do, or what I would like for us to do is do a quick walkthrough of some of the things we've learned today. So before that, Marcella says, in my city, there are some parks, but there aren't any hospitals. Fantastic work. Good use of the plural. So where do you live? Um, a city, which is a large town, a suburb, which is the residential area outside the city. Um, a town, a village, a very small town. Countryside, when you are surrounded by nature. And when we say by the sea, uh, when we live next to the sea, we say by the sea. We use the preposition by. Okay, so that's something important to remember. Um, let's talk about the adjectives that we picked up. We look through them. So um, let's look at the words on the left. Uh, we have cultural, exciting, polluted, chaotic, historical, crowded. A cultural place is a place with lots of interesting things to do and see, such as museums or events. An exciting place um, is a place where, again, there are things to do and see. But the difference, um, and a cultural place could be exciting, but an exciting place doesn't have to be cultural. Because an exciting place could be exciting because of the nightlife. Um, we have polluted. Polluted means very dirty. Um, it's when the air and the environment is dirty. Um, chaotic, disorganized, historical, having some important historic um, important importance in history, and crowded with too many people. And lastly, I would like to go over there is. And there isn't, there is and there isn't are used for singular nouns and uncountable nouns. And there are are used for plural nouns. Okay, guys, with that, we are at the end of our um, webinar. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for interacting with us. It makes it so much better. Do you have anything to say, Sean? Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a have a great time and hopefully we will be out to the cinema and the shops soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.